All the way up to number 10. Identify the vertex, axis of symmetry, max or min, domain, range of the polynomial. Now, if you take a quick glance, you should be able to see that the parent function is y equals x squared. So your brain should go, aha, I know it's some transformation of this. Well, the first thing that does is flip it. Then this actually narrows it, vertical stretch. And then this moves it to the right one. And I'm going to get out my pretty colors because this gets a little confusing. I'm going to make it dotted because we're not done yet. And then we're going to go up three. So that dotted pink one goes up three. And then I'm going to draw it in solid. Now it's not a perfect drawing, but it gets the job done because that point right there is the vertex one, three. And that's huge. So what's the vertex? Right there. There's my vertex. Axis of symmetry. That's a line. I'll make it a pretty color for you. That comes through and cuts it right in half. Remember, all vertical lines have an equation x equals, and this one happens to be x equals 1. Now, does this have a max or a min? Well, it has a maximum value because it goes up then comes down. What's the maximum value? Is it a 1 or a 3? It's always the y value, so the maximum value is 3. What's the domain? Well, even though this thing is screaming downwards, it's going to continue getting wide in the negative direction of x, and it's going to continue getting wider in the positive direction. So the domain is negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. What's the range? Well, the range, you always start with how low it goes. Obviously, this is going down forever, so it's negative infinity. How high does it go? It goes up to 3. It's kind of like your maximum value. And that's a bracket because it definitely touches it. And that's it for number 10. So number 11 says write the equation, which is telling us you've got to build something like this. So the generic form is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So the first thing they do is give you the vertex, and this is my x value, and that's my y value, and that's where you need to start. So you think, okay, there's my x adjustment, so I'm going to take that pink stuff and make a small adjustment, a times x. Now if this is moving left 3, I've got to go plus 3 squared. And if this is moving up 12, I just go up 12. Notice we don't know what a is. That's why they gave us this little clue. Let x be negative 2, let y be 8, because it goes through this point. We can use it. So 8 equals a, our new x value, plus 3 squared plus 12. Now I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides, and I'm going to clean this up. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So really I get negative 4 equals 1a, which is just telling you a is negative 4, which you just put it right here. And you're done. So there's number 11. This one's kind of giving you uh, the equation of a parabola, a quadratic. Um, but now they're telling you manipulate it to make it look like this. Remember what we learned in class. This comes from a perfect square trinomial. So we need to do that with this problem. It's been a while, but what we're going to do is concentrate on those. We're kicking the constant to the curb. What can I take out of this and this? Well, this is supposed to be a positive 1, so i got to take out a negative 5 x squared minus 2x plus space minus 1 plus space. Notice this times this gives me that. This times this gives me that. So we haven't done anything wrong. Take half of that. Negative 1. Square it. 1. Before we just put a negative 1 here, we got to use our noggin. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. So we actually have to put a positive 5 there. So now we have y equals negative 5 perfect square trinomial factors into x minus 1 squared plus 4. So where's the vertex? Right 1, up 4. And there's how you do that. Okay, on this next story problem, I've drawn you a little visual. A golfer's on a hill, looks like a mountain, but it's a hill. 
45 meters above the hole. So we know this is 45. Okay. Now the, the problem says the path of the ball can be modeled by the equation. So here it is, where x is the horizontal distance. So this is x. And I put some random tick marks here. We'll talk about that in a minute. x is the horizontal distance. y is the vertical distance. So we see this. That is your height. These x's are your horizontal distance. They're kind of painting a picture for us. So it says, what is the horizontal distance? Well, remember, um, the horizontal distance is where the ball is going to hit the x-axis. So that means find the zero. So the horizontal distance, we want the height to be zero. So we're going to stick that equal to zero. And then we're going to solve this. Now notice we can divide everything by a negative 5, so I'm going to do that. And then I look at this thing and I think, okay, 0 is, we can factor it, which is nice, x minus 9, x plus 1. Notice x is 9 or x is negative 1. Now if we use a little common sense, we can't have a negative distance, so we throw that out. So the problem is asking, what is the horizontal distance? Well, we got x is 9, so that is the horizontal distance, 9 meters, which is not very far. So it must have gone up and, you know, kind of gone up and come down somewhere way over here at 9. I'm just not going to extend my picture out here. I, just, I think you guys can make sense of that. So it says, what is the maximum height of the golf ball? See, on this problem we need to find the vertex. So we got to find where that goes up here. So um, what we're going to do on this problem, give me a second. All right, so what we're going to do, new piece of paper because I ran out of room, we're going to take that original equation, y equals negative 5x squared plus 40x plus 45, and because we need to find that vertex, we need to put this in vertex form. So, very similar to a problem we did earlier. We're going to have y equals, so we're going to take out a negative 5, because we're trying to build a perfect square trinomial. And remember, rule number 1 is this needs to be a 1. That's why we have to take that negative 5 out. So we're left with x squared minus 8x plus space plus 45 plus space. Take half a negative 8 is negative 4, squared is 16. Negative 5 times 16 is negative 90, so I got to put a positive 90 here. So I get negative 5 x minus 4 squared plus 135. So if we notice, um, at the point where x has traveled 4 meters, my maximum height would then be 135. And so the vertex right here is 4, comma, 135, telling us there's our height right there. Whoops, I was off the page. So, yeah, our vertex is 4, 135, maximum height. Okay, so here's number 14. Another problem about parabola is a basketball player is shooting free throws. So here's my guy. Here's the basketball, and here's the hoop, just like this. There's the backboard and everything. So the function right here gives the height of the basketball in feet after x seconds. So the ball is going to go up and come down. So here's the function. It says, um, how high does the basketball get? Remember, we got to put this in vertex form, so that's y equals... Now I'm going to take this and factor out a negative 2, x squared minus 4x plus space, plus 4 plus space. Half a negative 4 is negative 2, squared is 4, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, so i got to put a positive 8 there, so I get y is negative 2, x minus 2 squared plus 12. So this vertex right up here would be 2 to the right. 12 up. So what's my maximum height? 12 
feet, yeah, feet, 12 feet. Now it says, how long is the basketball in the air? Well, that's X. So we need to figure out what the zeros are from this original function. Because remember, if a parabola goes up and down, it's going to come down on the x-axis. So we got to figure out um, the x values of where our zeros are, which tells us take that y and set that equal to zero. So we're going to go zero equals negative 2x squared plus 8x plus 4. I'm going to divide this whole thing by negative 2 because it cleans it up real nice. X squared minus 4x minus 2. You love it when these are factorable, but this one, there's no two factors of negative 2 that add up to negative 4. So here's my A, here's my B, here's my C. We're going to plug it into our good friend, the quadratic formula, and let the quadratic formula do the work. So the opposite of B is 4, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2a. This is positive, I can see that. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 2 is 8, plus 16 is 24. So I get the square root of 24 over 2. Now I could spend some time breaking that down, but I'm going to show you something. So the square root of 24 is 4 plus or minus 4.9 all over 2. Now I'm going to look at the positive stuff. 4 plus 4.9 is 8.9 over 2, let me get that correct here, which is 4.45. And then this one for minus 4.9 would be negative 0.9 over 2. And we can't have um, a negative time, so that gets thrown out. So it's in the air 4.45 seconds. These next few are just pure algebra. So how do we solve this? Bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. Don't forget that little message. So I get plus or minus, take the i out, 144. So it's plus or minus 12i. Done. Solve this. Well, we want to turn this into a trinomial by setting everything equal to 0. Oh, I skipped 16. We'll get to that. So x squared minus 13x plus 12 is 0. We're like, wait a minute, let's try to factor this thing. So x and x, two factors of 12 that add up to negative 13, and they actually exist. So I go, ah, x is 12 or 1. Done. And again, you can plug them back in, see if they work. What's jumping out at me in this one is I can divide everything by 2. You don't have to, but it makes your life a lot easier, especially if you have to plug things into quadratic formula or factoring. Now this one, I can see, is also factorable. Two factors of 12 that add up to 7, 4 and 3. What causes this to be 0? Negative 4. What causes this whole thing to be 0 right here? Negative 3. So there's my two answers for that one. This one, 5x squared plus 3x. Now I'm going to add 13 to both sides. And then I'm going to look at this and go, you know what, even if it is factorable, I think I'm going to use quadratic formula. So there's the quadratic formula, and here's my A, B, and C. So let's go. Take the opposite of B, square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C. It's going to get a little messy in there. All over 2A, which is 10. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 13 is 260. So I get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus, let me double check that, 20 times 13, 260. I just wasn't sure. 260 all over 10. All right, so don't expect everything to work out perfect. So we get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of a negative 251 all over 10. Now what should we do with that? We should take an i out. So negative 3 plus or minus i square root of 251 all over 10. And that will do it for that one. All right, 14 minutes. We got a little bit left. So I'm going to try to foil this out. 3 times 2 is 6. 
3 times i is 3i. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10i. Negative 5i times i is negative 5i squared. Remember, i squared is the same thing as a negative 1. So this is negative 5 times negative 1, which is 5. 5 times 6 is 11. And this is negative 7i. Done!